all and see if it's live yet. It's loading. <laughs> it's loading. Oh boy. So fun. <laughs> it's an exciting ride. Yay. I'm trying to, yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to figure out if we're actually live. If it's, it's working, it's working on it. It's trying. I'm going to go to my phone just in case. When all else fails, go to the faster processor. Um, it says I we're live. It. Okay. No, I see it. I see something. My phone isn't. Let me, let me look at it here. Okay. It's my face. It's just my frozen face. Oh, wait, live. Uh, okay. Now what are we doing? Okay. Now we're good. I don't know. Okay. That's, it's fine on the, let me see if it's, Oh, you're not breaking up either. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Okay. There's the extension. All right. That's exciting. Okay. Hello. Um, woo. Woo. Yay. Yay. Uh, you're not glitching on the stream. So that's good. That's good. Um, this is our, our new look. Yeah. We have a new format. We're trying something new. Yeah. Really, um, Andrea is the, is the brains behind it. So uh, the first person to comment is going to be the first person who hopefully, if this works, gets their comment up on our whiteboard. Um, is it going to be Harrison or is it going to be Sean? I know. Because the knows? white is for the comments. Um, oh, they go right up there. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. So the whole now, Yeah. So now, uh, when you're in the chat, like you're you're a third member of the show. Um, That's cool. So let me see. Oh, oh, Simon. Simon. Simon Russin. Oh, you were beaten. Mm. With oh, you were almost there. Almost there, Harrison. Um, but doesn't this look cool? It does. I like this. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, sorry, Harry. Well, Harrison will always have the founder badge as our first... <laughs> sub ever um yeah so now oh, hi zoe oh hi zoe yay um cool that's running behind on there that's fine i'm just i'm checking things out because we're using so we switched um streaming platforms so i'm trying this is my first time using it so and we did it like just today so i'm like we're getting we're getting used to it i'm trying still figuring out like everything so Um, all right. So I'm Andrea. <laughs> if I'm you don't Gina. know us, that's Gina. Uh, this is Crime and Cookies. This Hi, is our, yeah. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out. Mm -hmm. We do a murder show. Yay. No, not yay. Not yay not for murder. <laughs> yay for, <laughs> yay. yay for a show. Oh, hi, Doreen. Um, yeah. Yay for having weird interests. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Cool. That's not working there, but that's fine. Everyone, uh, you'll have to forgive me tonight. I've had a migraine since Saturday. And so um, I'm not like fully myself. I'm most, I'm kind of myself. So uh, I'm not going to be as spectacular as usual. As oh, Andrea, oh, but. the soft bigotry of low expectations. I bet you blow <laughs> us all the way now. <laughs> now everyone's going to be like. Five, which is uh, fine. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. We we had a big weekend. We had a high energy weekend. So here in Philly, of course. Just, now it's settling down. Yeah. And now we have that serotonin withdrawal and it's just like yeah. a, a crash. Boom. Mm -hmm. And um, now I realize I still have papers to grade that like because I didn't do it last week, it doesn't mean that somebody did it for me. <laughs> no. They're still there waiting. Right. Uh, so that sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, so cool. Thank you for, I recently had a vivid dream about a murder. I Googled it, came up with nothing. I wonder what that was about. Ooh, mm. that's interesting, Harrison. Ooh, maybe it's like a, like, um, a murder that's going to happen.
computer froze. Okay. Um, Uh-oh. Uh, sorry. I I have had murder-related dreams, and my murder dream is always that- I'm not hearing anybody. I'm not hearing you. You can't hear me? Okay, hold on. Um, let me go back to this one. Uh-oh. Because you'll be hearing me in this, so let me- Audio. Yeah. Mike, can you hear me now? We're back. Yeah. Yay. Okay. That's weird. I made a dumb joke and then it went silent and I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I was like, I'm shutting the show down. That's it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. So I, I have had terrible dreams of um, having been a murderer. Like mm-hmm. my dream is that I have committed a terrible, like multiple murder. Wow. And yeah. And maybe this is like maybe you and Harrison are like working something out. Maybe, maybe. And it's just like my dream is about feeling the guilt. Ah, so interesting. That's, yeah. I froze. That's wonderful. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I keep seeing like um data stuff show up on my screen too. Um yeah, I don't know what the dealio is with my let me just re-get that in there. This is first day, first day. First day glitches. Come on, man. Um, cancel. Maybe I use buffering. Uh, eh, eh, eh. You can probably still hear me, though. Yeah. I, well, yeah, you're, I, yeah, I hope. <sighs> you're Andrea, but just not see her? Do you yeah. see me? Anybody? Okay. We're trying. We're doing a new platform tonight, so we have definite glitches. So just let us know if you can't see either. If you don't, maybe I'm just in an echo chamber. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Andrea uh, is frozen, but I hear her voice. Okay. Boy. Okay. Well, I look all right in my derp frozen face, so we can continue. Yeah, at least it's not out. a horrible like <laughs> in the middle of a cackle. I know. Usually whenever we do um, our preview pains, whenever they come up, I'm always like, ah, you can't see the face I'm making, but it's gross. There's definitely this one, this new platform, I'm sure everybody can tell is a little glitchy. Like I keep seeing myself like glitch out a lot. So do, oh, damn it. Do you boo? I tested this out. That's the thing. Like I tested this out and it was fine. Yeah. Andrea makes me sad. An hour today. Hours. Oh, let me just remove I myself. I'm going to remove myself and then put myself back in. Okay. While she's doing that. Um, <laughs> you can still hear me, I think. I don't yeah. Know, yeah, I wonder if you guys see me glitching because this it's good feedback because then we know what to do next next time on Friday. So just let us know. Um, again, it's just growing pains of trying out new platforms and things like that. So hopefully you'll be patient with us. Um yeah, my frame occasionally flashes. Yeah, that's a bummer. That's that's good. A I hope that bummer. doesn't become super annoying to everybody. Um, so let me think what else happened today. I really didn't do much because of my headache. I don't know if anyone else. I, don't, I think, I wonder if anyone else is also having like allergies right now. I am having major allergies. I think that's, I don't know if that's part of it. I don't know what's going on. But we'll just wait for Andrea to come back. I'm here. I'm oh, here. You just back. can't see me. Okay. Do you want to leave and come back? Um, of the streaming software? No. Okay. I could. Just, <laughs> I might be able to so use. That you're frozen. You know what? Let me use my. For some reason, just my webcam is freezing. Maybe so you let... use your laptop. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna use my laptop. Gonna... Um, yeah, and uh, Zoe's saying that she also has allergies. It's this warm weather, which I don't, I love. Don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying it, but I think it's with it, it's coming like a re a resurgence of allergies. So yeah. all the plants were like, oh my God, we could reproduce again. Amazing. <laughs> if, if trees start budding, I'm out of here. <laughs> Uh, all right. I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like I don't know. I'm like I'm like low. I'm getting lulled into this idea that there's not gonna be really a winter, and I know that's not true. Oh right. And I also had to take a pause in my um. While you're figuring things out, I had to take a pause in my bar 
blend workout because it's hurting it was hurting my knees and my whole body so much that I was like I think I need a break yeah. so it's been a rough week because I've been trying okay. to recalibrate hey there hey. Colin man, hello man look how much worse I look in this camera <laughs> no. I like my other camera I like my camera. my HD camera that's better okay stupid jerk all right I'm gonna <laughs> I wonder if I should change cameras to stop glitching. Um, I don't. It, I don't think it's your camera. I oh. mean, you, we could try. We could try. I could try. Um, well, I'm gonna unplug. Welcome to the murder show slash um, technical troubleshooting manual. One of us was a broadcast engineer, and that's why it took me 20 minutes to figure out my camera. <laughs> and one of us is just uh, an English teacher. No idea. Let's see if it gets better. Oh, nope. Still glitching. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh Don is here. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. Hello there. I hope, you, I hope you like our new setup. There's still some things I want to adjust, but I love the graphics that Sean made. They're so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so tonight I have, um, tonight we have a, an unsolved and I knew right away after, it's so funny because sometimes like when it's your week to tell a story, I don't know what story I'm going to tell. And then it will just come to me like right um, when you end, like I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So just like, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Um, I hope I'm not giving people seizures with my <laughs> flipping. I feel really bad. Um but anyway, so yeah, this one is an unsolved and it's kind of in the same vein as other um, cases that I've been really interested in. So I kind of am starting to have, I guess, like a brand. Oh, like, yes. Interested in. And it, this one fits in and it actually is it, at one time they thought it was connected to the um, Long Island serial killer, which is um, I'm going to just stand up. Um, they thought it was connected to the Long Island serial killer, which it is not, but it was. And I, I tend to think there are some similarities, but anyway, so that's part of why. And then also someone, I, I, I think I told you guys that um, recently um, somebody on Facebook was reaching out to me because I'm working on um, doing some research about the Frankfurt Slasher, which is, mm. we covered the, both the Frankfurt Slasher and we covered the Long Island serial killer twice. So I won't get into those again but um we um uh someone is on facebook has been messaging me that they know who the frankfurt oh, wait. Is. is this and the person who you think might be a little bit off yes definitely okay <laughs> uh, this person is very off and um she also thinks that person is like she thinks he's every serial killer around and she thinks that he might be the eastbound serial um, the Eastbound Strangler, which is who I'm doing tonight. And I don't think so at all. Um, so it's, uh, it, that was part of my interest as well as like, she believes a relative of hers is the Frankfurt slasher. And, um, but our conversations are really nutty. Uh, I wouldn't even call them conversations. Yeah, I, I thought we were at the point where we were going to ignore slash disengage because... Yeah, but keeps, like, I keep, like, being... I, what I've decided is that I mostly ignore and then sometimes just ask a question here or there just to see what she is talking about. And she does most of the talking. So I've learned <laughs> to sort of not engage, but sort of engage. But then one, I, one day I was like, well, if you know anyone else who also wants to share with me and she stops saying stuff, so I don't know oh. if it's, like, oh, there is no one else who can confirm <laughs> these crazy things I'm saying. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her. But so tonight I'm covering the Eastbound Strangler. Um, oh, I don't know what that is. So and it is. So I will. Huh, let me pull it up. Okay. And just a reminder, um, I, th I think by now people know we're talking about the uh, murder here. It can be graphic. This one, it's not so gra It's not like gory or anything like that. But uh, as usual, um, it's not a happy, it's not a happy story. So let me see. Someone's asking a question. Oh, that was me. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking the chat if they've heard of the Eastbound Strangler because I adjusted some settings. Is, I, bet, I bet not because I only heard of it through my other research. And then once I, and then when, when I went back in and looked at articles, everything, most articles come about right around the time that it happened. And it's sort of like petered out. So um, one of the, the biggest source that I use for this is one called um, Beyond the Boardwalk. And it was, it's kind of like, I think, written in conjunction with the 48 Hours television show. So the correspondent was jo someone called Jan John Clattell. Um, I also watched episodes three and four of The Killing Season, which it, uh, I think that came out, I want to say 2015, but I might be wrong. Um and then um, I watched another show called Dark Minds, which I'll talk about later. Um, I don't, I think you could skip it. Yeah. Um, and um, no, no shame on that show. Good for you for having your own show, but I, I'll talk about it later. And then um, there's another, there's another show that I couldn't really figure out. It's called Chasing News. It's not on anymore. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but they seem to be, I think it's only online. And it's like five, three to five minute um, clips. And it looks like a TMZ style. It's, it's bizarre. I can't figure out what's going on on that show. But I watched it because they covered this as well. Um, most information that I, a lot of information that I, and I'm going to be also talking about um, an article from a place called Stock Inc., which I'll talk oh, about. Oh, boy. Um, it's actually uh, professionals in the field. So like, um, I think like detectives and, and mental health experts kind of putting together a profile. So it's it'll be like very profile heavy when we get to that point. Um, what I noticed that there's a lot in these articles and shows of like overlapping um, so I, I verified that way. Like if two places were taught, seemed to be talking about the same thing, I sort of was like, I guess that's kind of verifying if they're all kind of in the same, doing the same, saying the same thing and things that I couldn't verify kind of. Yeah. Skim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on November 20th, uh, 2006, two women, um, unknown, were walking on a path behind a strip of CD hotels, uh, motels, excuse me, along the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, um, when they made a grisly discovery. In a drainage ditch, they saw a woman's dead body. Um, where they were walking, by the way, is not like a, tr um, it's a bizarre place to walk. Again, I don't, I don't know who the women were. I don't know what they were doing. If you look at the photographs, it's like um, it's a it's a drainage ditch behind a motel of like a dirty motel. So it's not like and it's all and there's that area is like dirty motel after dirty motel. So Oof. it's not like a walking area, but and there's train tracks, I think, nearby. But no judgment. But it's just a bizarre place to be. It's definitely serendipitous that they they were back there. Um, they called 911 to report what they found. And when the police arrived, they actually uncovered three more victims. So there were four bodies in total. Uh, all were female. And, um, they were all um, spaced exactly 60 feet apart from each other. Mm. I think, yeah. Sorry if I'm, yeah. Um, that's what I wrote down. Um, uh, they also had no belongings on them, like no personal belongings. And they had no phones on them. Um, there were also two more unusual discoveries in the staging of the crime. Uh, all the women were barefoot and their mm -hmm. feet were kind of like up, like their bodies were like, like, like kind of positioned, not, not extreme, but kind of positioned this way. So their feet were higher than their head. Interesting. Um, and they were all posed with their heads facing east toward Atlantic City. Ooh, Harrison says a dumping ground, which, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, and a weird one, um, which we'll get into. The first person uh, the police identified was a woman, a 35-year-old woman named Kim Raffo. Um, and I'll, I'm going to um, right now just like kind of introduce the women and then it goes back into their stories a little bit. And I've been thinking a lot about talking about some of the stuff. So hopefully we'll get into it. But Kim was originally from New York. And so um, for those of you who didn't watch our LISC shows or didn't see our LISC shows, 
um, this is very similar to the bodies that were left by the long, the Gilgo four, who were the four bodies left by the Long Island serial killer. They yeah. were all, um, it, they were a certain amount of feet apart. They were left in water. Um, they, um, were all sex workers. These women were sex workers, which I'll get into. Um, they were all, um, what was the other stuff? Um, I said when feet. you tap on your desk, it makes the weirdest sound. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is me thinking. Um, they were all, uh, yeah, spaced for a certain amount apart. Um, it was unsure if the women were all, the bodies were all dumped at the same time or put there like one by one. Like there's a lot of um, eerie, oh, and they were all, did I say put in water? Like it's all similarity. And another similarity was that 35 Kim, 35 year old Kim Rafa was originally from New York and had just been in Long Island right before she was murdered. So that was kind of like some of the similarities that were showing up early on. But this happened, this would have happened before the Long Island serial killer. Okay. So um, Kim, Kim's cousin, uh, Juliet, remember the two of them growing up on the streets of Brooklyn. They were always smiling, always happy. Um, as Kim grew up, she was headed in the, they call it the right direction. I don't know what that means, but I guess not. not she, was a, she was a good girl, didn't run with the bad crowd. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, she she really ran into some problems in, in Atlantic City. So I, that's what they mean. Oh, um, yeah. She had it together. Um, she fell in love with a guy named Hugh Oslander, um, who... Um, they fell in love and got married in 89 and they moved to Florida and had two children. Her husband worked construction. She was a stay at home mom. Um, and it was just like a normal, she was like normal PTA mom. And if you see pictures of her, that's exactly what she looks like. It's, it's weird. I don't want to, I'm definitely not stereotyping sex workers, but she, uh, most people who met her said like she stood out because if you saw her, you would assume she was just like the mo a mom, mm. like a mom shopping somewhere. Yeah. Um, but then things fell apart for her. Um, she actually started, she fell in love with another man who was a chef um, and that she met in a cooking class. Don't take cooking classes. It just leads <laughs> to problems. <laughs> and uh, so then they, their marriage was over uh, by 2003 and she moved to Atlantic City. She left her kids. Um, mm -hmm. and moved to Atlantic City with her husband, her lover, sorry. Um, and they sort of, and I'll get into it a little bit, but they sort of fell down a bad path together in Atlantic City. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. She was actually strangled to death. Um, yeah, terrible. They talked a little bit. So in that, so this, I don't even know how to describe the show Dark Minds. I don't, has anyone seen it? No. It is, um, it is, it's a reality show and it's a guy, he's like, I feel really bad for him. His sister-in-law, his brother's wife died this way. She was a drug, she was addicted to drugs. She fell into sex work and she ended up getting murdered. And he is basically like trying to solve her murder slash trying to solve, like figure out what like other women in that situation. So, I mean, obviously like he has a good heart. But the show is like so over the top dramatic. Oh. But it's like he has like such a 90s vibe with like the what do you call the hair here? A goatee. A soul patch. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. And, the, and highlights and stuff. Oh and man. He's passionate, but it's so over the top with drama that I'm like, so he teams up with John Kelly, the profiler. And um John Kelly has a has a guy he works with who's a serial killer in jail and oh, they wow. don't know the guy's name it's he has like a code name and they basically like call him up and the guy the serial killer basically dictates like how much time he's going to spend with you and what he's going to tell you and they don't know ever if it's true or not so john kelly lets this guy i forgot his name um call like talk to him and he gets like all emotional <laughs> about it and john kelly's like you can't get motion emotions involved, man. And oh, it's man. just like it's like so over the top. So I like, I have to say, Harrison and I thought the same exact thing. This is Sugar Ray hosting this crime show. I was like, is this Mark McGrath? Yes. <laughs> that is exactly what he looks like, Mark McGrath. Um I and it, just wanna solve crimes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he is so over the top, but like 
I think he really feels it in his heart, but it just it like comes off like I don't know. You have I, mean, I had a I had, I paid two ninety nine for the episode because it wasn't free on Prime, and it was fine. Like I'm glad that I did because like I'm glad I got another perspective. But it's just funny. Like I was like I don't think I would watch the whole season because it's a lot. It's a lot. He's a lot. <laughs> So um, anyway, they, they when they talk to my point, sorry, I went way off around the block, but uh, the point was that when they talk to the, the, the serial killer, he says like one reason that people, somebody will strangle somebody else is because they can kind of play God with that person. Like they could strangle them and the person could like pass out and then they can bring them back. So it's like a, it's like the ultimate power over mm-hmm. somebody's life. And then the second thing is he said, there's no blood, there's no blood. So like someone and put them in your car and transport them and you're not really going to have the issue of like, you know, cleaning up. So I didn't really, I mean, that's so obvious and I never really thought about that. I always thought like strangling was personal, but I guess it's to a serial killer. It's a whole other, I always thought too, it doesn't make as much noise. That's what I always thought. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't Um, need equipment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Hey. Do you have a dog? Um, uh, uh, there is one here. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, that's we'll news to me. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that in this house. Okay. Uh, the second, uh, victim was identified similarly. She was a woman called, tw- uh, she was a 23 year old woman called Tracy Roberts. <laughs> Tracy. Hey. So sorry, everybody. What's it barking at? I don't know. Here, take this, please. Take. Thank you. Me not paying attention. Oh, so 23-year-old Tracy Ann Roberts came from a small town in Delaware, and she was actually trained to be a medical assistant. Um and they said, like, she was, at, you know, when she was doing that, she had her whole life ahead of her. Things were going well. And then we'll see later that um, she's, as with most, most of these women, a drug habit evolved. And from the drug yeah. habit came the other. Yeah. Um, six days after the bodies were found, they identified the third person. So these women were in various states of decomp, and which is the problem. For identifying them so they think that they were dumped at the same time but if they had them somewhere else they could tell who died first second third and fourth based on the comp the, mm-hmm. the deep so Bra- barbara brider was the third um she was identified through dental records um her sisters francine and valerie um weren't surprised that she was a victim because she'd been missing for weeks um they, she had grown up in philadelphia right outside of Philly. And um, she was raised, they say, in like a stable and loving home. But then when her dad died, she had trouble um, coping with that and became really depressed. She went to Penn State. Um, She had a rough year there. Um, She moved to this Jersey Shore. um, And then in 1997, she had a, a daughter named Dominique. Um, Dominique was nine at the time of her murder. Mm. Uh, Barbara Brider was 42. Barbara was also in an abusive relationship. And so she escaped domestic violence. Um, and, um, Dominique is now being raised by her sister. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. I'm so sorry. Hey, stop that. We don't do that here. Here. Um, do you want to hear what I learned on TikTok to get Spencer to stop um growling at people out the window? He's growling at himself in the reflection. Can you remove the reflection? Try. I'm sorry, everybody. It's okay. I still don't know anything about this mystery dog <laughs> that Gina refuses to talk about, but wants to cameo on the show anyway. <laughs> My cat came in to meow at me when he heard another dog. He was probably like, no, you are not. You are not letting anyone else in this house. We are not getting another pet. (laughs) Sit down. What the hell are you doing? Sit. 
bit. You're weird. <laughs> so anyway, um, her daughter is only nine. Um, and her sister is now raising her. Oh, hi, X28 Project. Good to see you. Happy to see you. Um, let me see. I need to know about the dog. Yes. Um, what kind of dog? He's a, oh my God, pain in the ass mix. <laughs> Pom, he's a Pomeranian mix. Aw. Where did he come from? Why is he there? <laughs> What's his name? He's a, he's a shelter dog. His name, he doesn't have a name yet. Um, it, things are not going well. <laughs> um, so here's here's my weird um, advice for you that I learned on TikTok from a dog trainer. And that is as soon as he barks. What's he barking at now? I don't know. He doesn't, this is the first time he's ever barked. As soon as, as soon as he barks, um, physically challenge him oh like fight so, challenge to not, a fight so oh. like you you look him in the eye and you like get over him and just until he backs down and then um he's barking at your shadow people harrison knows <laughs> um yeah so that's how dogs know yeah that's how that's how you assert yourself as the alpha so no. It sucked when I had to do it with Spencer, but as soon as he would bark, he gets on the other couch and barks at people out the window or like squirrels or whatever. The second he started making noise, I would tell him to get down off the window and like get in between him and the windows to be like, the window is mine. And now he doesn't. So. Okay. Thank you. So also um, he's barking at the ghost. Yeah. Um, yeah, you that. need, you need to keep this dog. He's barking at ghosts for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like if, so when a dog submits to you, he'll like, he'll sit down or he'll lay down, he'll turn his head, he'll break eye contact with you, um, or yawn sometimes or like put mm -hmm. his tongue out. So that means, yes, I understand what you're, you're telling me. So you kind of like get in his space until he knows like, okay, this is going to happen every time I do this. Okay. Now so. it's just growling at me. It's fine. That's not good. I know. The problem is that he's growling at Jude, and if he doesn't stop, we're not going to be able to do it. Right. Yeah. I won't have him growl. At, like, I told I told the dog, Jude is my baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, also, the same thing. Get between him and Jude when he does that, because Jude is yours. So then... Yeah. It's like, you have to ask my permission. Yeah. So, but he shouldn't um, be growling at a child. The, I talked to the, yeah, I talked to the shelter already. It's because I don't think he had, like he's five and I don't think he's had kids in the house. And he is just, I think already super attached to me. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, no. Um, oh yeah. no. Um, we'll see. Cause he's also growling at people in the neighborhood and I can't have that either. Yeah, no, you can't have that. So, um, I, he might be a little too aggressive. Um, so we'll see. Or very insecure. Yeah. Just be like Caesar. I watched a lot of Caesar Milan also, and <laughs> you, you have to be calm and in charge because if you are not, then he's going to think that he needs to be. So a lot right. of these dogs that were really high strung or whatever, and he's afraid he's in a new place. He doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. So make sure he knows that you're the alpha. I am. It's the not alpha. just bro talk. Take him back to the shelter. Oh, your mom really took a dog back to the shelter. It's sad, but if he's not in the right house, you're none of you are going to be happy. They um the cats are mostly fine. Like they did not like that barking, but the cats don't. He doesn't care about the cats at all. He doesn't look at them. He doesn't acknowledge them. So they. They don't like it, but they're fine. Like he doesn't, he doesn't even go near them. Like he pretends like they're not there. Yeah. So they're curious about him, but they're okay. Oh. I'm more upset about the, um, um, the, the growling at, at people in the neighborhood. Um, because I, there's tons of kids here. Yeah. There's tons of kids and they all want to pet him. And I'm like, yeah. don't touch him. And then I feel bad to be the, the asshole who's like, oh, you can't touch my dog because he's. You're not being an asshole. You're not being an asshole. Um, and um, I, if he doesn't stop, the, he did, if, he didn't, Jude was like wanting to pet him and 
he growled at Jude and when Jude tried to pet him, he tried to bite Jude. So Ooh, yeah, no. I, I called the shelter about like being unnoticed because if he doesn't calm down with Jude, I can't have, I just can't have that. Like yeah. Jude comes first. they were really, they're really understanding about that. And it's not like I don't, I, it's not that I don't want him. It's I don't want him. He might not be the right dog for you. Yeah. If he's going to attack uh, Jude, that's what I'm worried about. It sounds like he's child aggressive. Yeah. Which, why didn't they find that out? I don't know. You know what I found with shelters? And human and- aggr- like, basically human aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Like, he likes one person, me, and then everybody else. Like, literally, we went, every time we go for a walk, if there's nobody around, he's so happy. As soon as somebody comes near us, he's like, Arr. and I'm like, well, who are you? Who yeah. are you finding? Like, these people, they don't even, like, nobody's looking at him um yeah so. I don't like how this sounds either I agree with you your know, mom and the weird, I'm so sorry to take it I mean you guys didn't tune in for this for this <laughs> so sorry it's fine. um that's why I didn't want to talk about it because I'm like very overcome because I'm I like Jude and I decided together that we wanted to go for walks more and that we really wanted to do this and now the dog like Jude wants this dog to like him so bad and he was like won't um and then like I noticed the day that we picked him up in the shelter like there were some things wrong on his sheet like like he has heartworms and I knew that and yet but they told me he was in treatment now it's like oh no you have to they're paying for it but I have to do the whole treatment I thought he was already in treatment so I'm a little bit upset about that and then they also told me like he was eight he was 16 pounds he's eight pounds like there's a lot that's different like he's he's small yeah (laughs) I um he just does not like people Mm. but he lived with an old man like so he basically his story is that he like lived with an old man and the old man died and he was taken to a shelter with his (laughs) his son the dog son pablo okay but pablo he and pablo weren't bonded so pablo went elsewhere Mm -hmm. and jack came here and he's just does he just growls all the time and well, I don't like that. Yeah. No, it's that's not a good situation. So Zoe's saying um, she had a similar experience, um, took in a dog that couldn't be near other dogs and animals. They didn't tell her. And they already have two cats and dogs. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like a reputable. I, you know, I have had that happen so many times with rescues and shelters when they. I and it's I don't want to call it a bait and switch because that's a con. And I don't want to like cast aspersions right. on these people who do have good intentions. But I. I showed up um, to look at one dog and they were pushing another dog on me. And she's like, well, you know, this dog would be great for you since you live in an apartment. Hold on. And I was like, well, because he's an escape artist. And I'm like, what does that mean? And she's like, well, he runs um, out of the house. Like if you open a door, he runs out the door. And I'm like, okay, well, my apartment, that wouldn't work in my apartment because my door is on the street. And then suddenly it was like, oh, no, he'll be fine. He won't run out the door. He won't, he won't get out of the house. I'm like, you did, you just told me, you just told me. And then when I picked him up too, she was like, well, he will mark all over your house on the first day. And I was like, oh God. And I brought him home and he didn't do it at all. And I'm like, did they, and this was a foster parent. And I'm like, did you even, like how, everything she told me is like the opposite of how he is. And she's like, he's so calm and loving. And I'm like, he's not calm. Right. Something's (laughs) making him not calm. He won't let me sleep. Like, like if I try to go to sleep, he like nips at me. Um, Does he have a crate? I got him a crate, but I feel bad putting him in it. Put him in it. Right. Give him give him a lot of treats. Make it really comfy. Dogs like I having think, dens. I feel emotional because I don't, with his aggression, I'm really, I don't know that, I don't know that I can keep him and I feel like a, like an idiot and I no. feel like I don't know how to tell Jude because like Jude won't understand. I'm, I don't want to cry. Um, Jude won't understand. Well, I mean, will Jude understand that you can't have a dog that is mean to him? Yeah. I like I would be really upset too. I know. I I would be the exact same way. I'd be heartbroken. Um does this remind you of Katie? Oh yeah, we brought home a cat. We adopted a cat and she was just the meanest cat. Oh no. The meanest yeah. Cat. 
And the thing is, like, with the cat, like, she she was fine. She just, like, she was fine around up. Here's the thing. If he wasn't, if he wasn't aggressive towards Jude, I might think it's okay. But the fact that he's aggressive towards Jude and any child in the neighborhood makes me uncomfortable. Because yeah. if he, it, like, if he all of a sudden, like, if he's growling and I don't stop it and he bites a kid, that's it. It's over. Right, right. And that's what I'm worried about is, like, him biting somebody. Well, Harrison and, and Zoe have your back. They say you're definitely doing the right thing. You did nothing and wrong. Like, Don't feel bad. Old, but maybe he, he is like an old person's. I don't mean old yeah. person in a negative way, but maybe he needs somebody who's childless. Um, it seems like he does. Yeah. Um, it seems like he was doing good at his foster home. So maybe he'll take him. Yeah. He he was. He, and he keeps doing this thing, which is like one paw up, which means like, I don't, I'm, I'm nervous. So I know he's nervous, but it's just like. I feel like I just make, I, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just burying my soul. I feel like I make the worst choices in life. No, it's the shelter, the shelter. I know. I'm just I'm so sorry. mad at myself. I'm sorry. Don't be. Talk about it. Don't be mad at yourself. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I wish I could hug you. Because okay. you need a hug. <sighs> and the shelter did you dirty. And this, everyone is suffering. The dog is suffering. You are suffering. Jude is suffering. The cats are also suffering. The cats are <laughs> suffering. <laughs> yeah, just as always says it'll be okay. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I'm sorry, everybody. This is no. so inappropriate. No, it's not. Masters. No, it's not. Okay. That's a fun goth look for our murder show. <laughs> Good thing I did like a very, I found TikTok for some reason is the best thing on earth. And they had this one woman did this, like, if you want to have a makeup routine and um like a quick one it's literally like five minutes and I tried it and I was like oh my god I never want to put on more makeup than this <laughs> so at least it won't run why are you growling there's nothing to growl about maybe to get your attention hey your mom yeah. says you can borrow Eddie anytime you can also <laughs> borrow Spencer see like Spencer and Eddie Eddie is Eddie and Spencer are like dream dogs this dog, like the growling upsets me because it's like when I'm in the shower, like I took the world's fastest shower because I was like, oh my God, there's going to be murder. Well, <laughs> anyway, put him I'm in like, the crate. Put him in the crate. I don't know why I feel bad about the crate. Do not feel I'm, bad. Everybody, I am a terrible person and I am so sorry. You're okay. not. You are not. You are not terrible. I keep trying um, to make my life better and I keep just messing it up. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're fine. This is your first time having a dog. Okay. You're fine. They love their crate. Put some blankets in there. Give him treats. Give him special treats in the crate. Okay. He'll lo he'll love it. Okay. Spencer was crated. It's fine. <sighs> okay. Sorry, everybody. We're it's talking okay. about murder. Let's get We're back to the murders. <laughs> Has it, is all of our have all the followers gone? They're just like, oh, no. wrong. Your with squad. Her. Your squad is still here. <laughs> We're here. Ah, thank you for being part of my emotional journey. <laughs> I'm well, like, this pandemic has been really hard and I'm so, I'm sure like everyone else, I'm so sick of being lonely. I'm lonely and I'm trying to do things that are like, would get me moving and make me feel happy. And I just feel like every choice I make, I'm like, well, I messed that. Like, I oh. just feel like I'm trying to, I'm trying to pretend like there's not a pandemic and it's normal. And like, I could find a, I'm trying to like find a workaround around. Yeah. It. Yeah. A workaround. It's just like, um, it's just what it is. And I have to stop trying to make it better by making it worse. Cause <laughs> yeah. Harrison <sighs> says, um, let's unwind with some murder. <laughs> <laughs> So the fourth victim was um, so we had we had the three victims Kim Raffo Tracy Roberts and the third was Barbara Brider. Um, the fourth victim was difficult to identify because they, she was either in the ditch for over a month or she had been decomp um, in decomp for over a month. Mm -hmm. So they had to re actually release images of her tattoos, which they that's how they found one of the bodies. So. Um, if you're ever interested in, and I strongly recommend a deep dive into the Long Island serial killer, um, the podcast is the best. There's a podcast called Lisk, and it's the best way to deep dive into it. 
um, and how they found one of the, so there's four, the Gilgo four are four victims and then they ended up finding six others, six or five others um, um, that were older, way, way older. Yeah. And um, so really hard to identify. And one of the victims that they found that was a Jane Doe, they just identified her in June. And it was the same thing that she was identified through a tattoo. So get everybody get a tattoo. Right. It's a very distinguishable tattoo. Don't get like some Chinese uh, writing. <laughs> that doesn't have, mean yeah. you think it means. <laughs> have a weird birthmark or failing that, get a tattoo. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have a good birthmark, get a, a distinguishing tattoo because that's how – We'll find your body. Um, sorry, that's so dark. Um, there was a tattoo of a bulldog, an English bulldog, and her family members uh, recognized it, and that's how she was identified. This poor girl, her name was Molly Diltz. She was only 20. Oh. Um, and there was no evidence that she was a sex worker. Um, there's, she was never arrested for it. Um, there was no sign of it, but she had... I think a drug issue and, or I know she had a drug issue. She moved from Black Lake PA, which was like, is like, I don't know it firsthand, but it's supposed to be like a tiny town where like it's, they call it a mining town where there's like nothing going on. And, um, and a quote that in the article from her uncle, it said, for everything that poor girl had gone through, I think she came out pretty damn well, but they don't go into what she had gone through. Oh. So my theory is obviously tough life, no idea. Um, uh, oh, there, I do know, however, that she did, I'm sorry, she did lose her mother and brother when she was a teenager. So that, that could be part of it. Um, but she also had a rebellious side um, and she also had a son named Jeremiah. But she left um, her family, including her son, in 2006, and she wanted to pursue a better life in um, somewhere else. And she had called her family from a New Jersey phone number. Uh, she called Collect from a New Jersey phone number in October of 2006, and it was traced to a payphone in Atlantic City, and then that was the last time they ever heard from her. So these are four women, and I like to reiterate this because you see this a lot uh, with these cases. These are four women with family, people who knew them, people who loved them, and they kept in contact. These aren't people who are, um, like, they are, they are transient to a certain extent because they've left their lives and are kind of, like, not living a straight, like, nine-to-five type, type of scenario, but they are keeping in contact with their family. So yeah. when they're missing, when they go missing, their family immediately reports them. It, um, they were all four were reported yeah. right away. Um, um, not to not to sidetrack you, but Christy Mitchell too said wanted to also um, recount a bad shelter experience. So it's mm -hmm. not you; it's the shelters saying um, the shelters just try to keep dogs moving through the system. Um, but they eventually found the right dog. Hang in there. So oh, thank you so much. Thank you that means so much. To yeah. Me. We appreciate the love. Thank you. I didn't all you guys. I, I'm so, again, so naive. I didn't think, I thought the shelter would um, be truthful. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, sometimes they're like, well, let's just try it and see. And yeah. sometimes. Probably because they want to just home, rehome the dog. Um, so a little bit about two that too, about Atlantic city. And it's funny to me. So I, those of you who um, live on the East Coast and uh, uh, go have been to it, I haven't been to Atlantic City in forever. I know. Um, since it kind of like went downhill, like when a lot of the casinos closed. I, so I used to go, my, so my grandparents loved Atlantic City. And my grandmother and grandfather went all the time, like during the day. Mine they would too. Either take the bus there or drive there and play the... Um, the what do you call it the machines and my grandfather would play um roulette and the, it was just like a daytime fun thing and that there was like a definitely a little bit of a a time period in which that was like the thing to do every mm -hmm. time you go there that was like the big thing and there was like all the casinos were open at that time and things were going I guess pretty well but one of the things that I think is interesting is that all these women went for a better life to Atlantic City and Atlantic City is the last place I would go to like I don't know if any of you have this experience but it is even in its even in its day when I'm talking about where you could go at night or go in the afternoon it was still horrendous 
yeah. I feel. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's definitely they were misguided in that notion that you were going to get a better life. I could see if you were going to go and um, I think Kim Raffo and her boyfriend, before they fell into a crack addiction, worked at one of the casinos. And I can kind of see how that would be alluring because it's exciting inside and and during – during the, Well, during this time, I think it was already downhill, but during definitely maybe a little bit before that, um, maybe 10 years before that or five years, I could see how it would be exciting and thrilling to work there. Harrison supports your categorization of it as a trash hole. Yes. But it, it kind of is. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is. It's, it's not glamorous. No, no. Even the, even the, so the casinos, even when, even how good they could look inside and all like the shine, the polish that they put on them. The people going there are like by and large, like very desperate. You can see they're like clinging to money or desperation or whatever. It's so sad. It's incredibly sad. It's not Vegas. It's not Vegas at all. Oh no. Oh no. Um, And yeah, it's not Vegas. It wants to be Vegas. And I think at a certain point in time, they were trying to make it Vegas. I think in the eighties, um, there was a, there's another murder story that I haven't covered yet. I read the novel and then I've forgotten all the details. So I have to read it to talk about it. And I just haven't had the will, but in that one, there was a couple who lived out like outside of, um, Atlantic city. And they would go there like in, I think it was like in the eighties, they would go at night for, um, like dinner or to hang. It was like a, it was like a posh hangout at a certain point. Well, there are but, great restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I'm so sorry for anyone listening who like is from there, or loves it there, but it's, it's not, it's not the glamour that you would, of, of like you said, like a, yeah. a long time, I guess. It's, if you're from there, you know, like, you know, we're not ragging on Atlantic city. We're just, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, where, where, blah, 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 where was I? Oh, um, and then right outside of Atlantic city, there's a, this strip of low rent motels, um, where, and the black horse pike. Um, and like, so uh, like, the black horse pike goes yeah. right through my town yeah. that I grew up in. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot of varying, like there are parts of the black horse pike that are fine. And then there are parts that are seedy. Um, and the police actually, what's interesting is the police had been trying to, um, close down a lot of those CD motels for a long time and hurricane Sandy pretty much put them out of commission. And it was at that, after that point that they got knocked down. So the golden key motel, which is behind, uh, the the women were found behind that place. It was a knocked it was, um, demolished, I think in 2010, I think. But it might have been a little bit after that. But it was de- it was after no, it couldn't have been because when was Sandy? Oh, what year was Sandy? 2016, 2015? It wasn't 16. Um, I can't remember. I fit maybe it was 15. Yeah, so it was right after then. Wait, hold on. No, it couldn't have been because my grandfather was, was still alive during Sandy, so it had to be a lot earlier. I think it was that. 12. Maybe. I think it was 12 because I, w- I remember who I was dating and I remember who I'm dating by what presidential election it was while I was dating them. <laughs> that's, <so funny. laughs> that's, that's how I do it. So I had to leave um, my dog, Spencer, because I had to go to the hotel for the radio station. Oh, right. Uh-huh. So they put us up in the hotel so we could walk across the street to the station and not have to have any transportation issues. And I was, yeah, it was 2012. And I was dating um Damien and that was during Obama's re-election huh, and that's how I know what your things are <laughs> <laughs> you go by election yep. okay oh, and the article talks about how like in the summer of the 40s it would be wall-to-wall people on the beach there and if you remember um the movie Beaches that takes place in Atlantic City in the beginning when they're little girls and they're playing on the beach together so it's kind of like um Ooh, another it- Atlantic City movie is Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken which was another draw in Atlantic City, The Diving Horse, which my mother saw when she was little. Huh. huh. Have you ever the heard of The Diving Horse, horse on the steel car? I've never seen it, but I don't know if my mom ever... I don't think my mom went to Atlantic City as a girl. She probably would have went to Coney Island over that. If you're um, up in the north, yeah. So in the 70s, it said the, the economy collapsed. Um, and so that's when they legalized casinos. And then at, once they legalized casinos, things kind of went down. 
um, a lot of those casinos ended up closing when um, they legal they made those um, gambling places in PA because people in PA now had no longer had to drive the hour right. and change to Atlantic City. Uh, now you could just go to parks or wherever, whatever they're called. I don't know what all of them are called. <laughs> I, I haven't really been to any of I've been to one of them and I left with a, a terrible headache because of the smoke. It was so oh. bad. I, like, I can't go there ever again because of the- Oh, your mom saw the diving horse too. Oh. Yeah. I think it's so awful that they made that horse. It <laughs> is. And in the movie, she goes blind. Spoiler. Oh. But she goes blind from the it's- water. But um, yeah. Oh, they worked at the – so Kim and Kenny um, – Kenny was her boyfriend. Um, they worked at the Taj Mahal Casino, which is now closed, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, they're all closed. Um, all the Trump ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really weird. Um, there's a whole set of them that I used to visit and that are just not there anymore. So I can't even imagine. And they imploded the sands. Yep. Yep. Steeplechase, um, yeah. So they had steady jobs there, um, but um, it says, like, the article said, it didn't take long for Kim to learn that life in Atlantic City changes the second you walk out the casino doors. It doesn't take anybody. <laughs> like, yeah. literally, it takes nobody. Um, in fact, they built those stores going up, like, I don't know if anyone has been there or been there recently, but they built a set of, uh, a walk of stores, like, some high end, like I think I don't think it's high end actually. I think it's like outlet stores. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. So they're really the the construction was really nice, but they were having like I remember not even probably five years ago, which means it could be anywhere from fifteen years right. ago. It now. was in the nineties, um, you know, it five years ago of my life. <laughs> um, that there was like people getting killed like in the middle of the day on that walk, yeah. like, and me thinking like I. I think I'm done with Atlantic City. Like, I don't think I'm going to go there anymore. Um, so you have the, so the, the article talks about the, um, the opulent casinos surrounded by dead zones of poverty and crime. Yep. Um, and so what happens is, and there's a place called the track, which is like to one side of the casinos. And they say like, that's a no man's land. Like you can't go, you can't go in that section. It's very um, dangerous. And that's where most, what the article refers to it as prostitutes, sex workers, um, wait for clients. Hmm. Um, and so what happens is that they would, Kenny and, in Kenny and Kim's case, they would leave their apartment and walk and they would be offered drugs. And after a while, they sort of fell into it. And then they, they both had pretty, they both ended up with pretty bad crack addictions, which let them to lose their jobs which led her into sex work. Um, in fact, it says during this 48 hours interview that he was allowed to smoke, like that he was smoking crack during the interview. Wow. Cause it was yeah. that bad. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, um, oh, I'm sorry. He, I'm sorry. He became a shoplifter and she became a sex worker. Um, and this is kind of where I, so I, Quoted this woman, and I want to go. It's all the way at the bottom of my page. I'm sorry. They quoted this woman um, that talks about um, serial kill, solve serial cases, serial killer cases from 1970 and 2009, and the relationship between those and sex workers. And it says the number of serial murder cases overall has declined, and the li- but the likelihood that a victim is female has increased. Mm. Um, but it says it's been increased um, to be likely to be prostitutes. So that um, it says U.S. serial murder cases with prostitute victims account for 32% of all U.S. serial murder cases involving female victims only um, from 1970 to 2009. However, this is the interesting thing. The proportion of solved cases involving female prostitute victims increased in the study period from 16% during 1970 to 1979 to 69% between wow. 2000 and 2009. That's a huge jump. Yeah. And they say the reason for it is that the women are vulnerable because they are going, obviously they're going with men that they don't know into a situation they don't know. And if you have a and not all. I don't want to say that everyone is under this umbrella, but very specifically, one thing that I notice about the women who are victims in this, victims of 
um, Lisk, victims um, in some other, in um, I, 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 the first crime we ever color, covered was Willie Picton, who was able to kill prostitutes for 10 years mm-hmm. because the police didn't believe that they were missing women. Um, one thing that I noticed among this population only as versus others is that there's a heavy incident, incidence of drug addiction, which causes your, your need for your drugs. Like I think they said Kim Raffo's addiction was like $200 a day. Wow. So um, your need for the drugs becomes stronger than your safety, plus you're kind of strung out. So your inhibitions go down because you just want that money. Mm -hmm. So that's one issue. The other issue is sex trafficking, which we see in the Long Island serial killer, and which I saw a lot in Vancouver when I covered Willie Picton, that you have women who are brought into sex work through through human trafficking. Um, and then, so you have addiction, you have human trafficking, and then you have like Barbara's experience with domestic violence, right? right? You, whether that is sort of driving you out and, and making you feel desperate, like you don't have anything and you're desperate and you fall into drugs. And so in that, so I'm primarily just talking about women who go into sex work for those reasons. It seems to, and if they are becoming more and more vulnerable to serial killers, it seems to me and the police, instead of turning a blind eye, instead of hearing that these women are missing and thinking, well, it's their fault or, um, you know, they put themselves, or they, you know, who knows, maybe they're, they're not really missing or whatever. It seems like a huge disparity between like just ignoring it and knowing that they're vulnerable and maybe doing something about human trafficking. Yeah. You know, like though instead, I I wonder if it's because the women, it's women, women victims that is sort of a blind eye is being turned. I'm sure that's part of it. And then when you think of drug addiction, like that is, that makes you vulnerable. And we're seeing a lot of drug addiction in this country because of poverty, right? Um, for a lot of things, but a lot of things people turn, people turn to drugs a lot because it's, um, it's like, it's, it's a medication, right? Well, a lot of the opiate ep- epidemic, um, right. is people with money, like middle-class people who are bored, right. um, and have the means at first and then poverty yeah. follows because you get swallowed up in the, right. in the but addiction. I'm sure now that people losing their jobs and being, um, evacuated i'm sure you're 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 gonna see incidences of problems rise so yeah just, like the 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 fallout is like oh these women chose this life and so you know we're not gonna invest we're not gonna investigate it until it becomes a problem for our commerce um like long island serial killer that those weren't investigated until it became a huge issue in Atlantic City, people were afraid, becoming afraid because there's a serial killer on. So now they're going to, you know, now it's a big deal. Right. Um, instead of waiting for that, it seems to me that this idea that more and more sex workers are being killed, it seems like there's not enough being done to sort of get at the symptom of the prop, like get at the the crux of the problem. You are banging on your desk a lot. Sorry. I do it all the time. I can't I help it. I it makes a it. sound. It makes it like boom, 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 boom. I feel it. <laughs> so, and um, we can't yeah. see it. So it's just like a drumbeat. It's just <laughs> it's like, God, like, she's right. Um, so yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about that over the, like, as I've been reading this, that it's a shame that the problem is a problem affecting them, but then they're being victim shamed, right. you know, um, and we see it in Lisk and we see it in, in all of the cases that, you know, it's like hooker slain, you know, and instead, and it like, it draws on their, what was their fault about the situation. Harrison was dancing to your drum beat there. That <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else like thinks about that stuff. I think about it a lot primarily because this is the kind of case that I'm super interested in. And I feel like these women are sort of set up to like they've fallen into a bad situation and sort of there's no escape. Yeah. Like like Barbara Breeder for all intents and purposes was escaping an abuser. And so, you know, and then like, I don't know, how is it, how easy is it to fall into drug? Like I've avoided it, but I don't, I don't go, I'm not in that circle. I'm not in Atlantic city. Right. past drug dealers every day i'm not having the problems that they have so like i don't know right 
Uh, um, they interview actually this woman um, and who knew um, Kim and they just say like when you're into the street life you have a habit and you have to maintain that habit whether there's a killer or not so um, I thought that was interesting as well um, on September 9th um, when Kenny was in jail for shoplifting her ex-husband actually arrived in Atlantic City and um, scooped her up and he like talked her into like coming back to Long Island and um, cleaning up and she like took the she took advantage of that she wanted to get out of that life that's another thing all of these women in particular didn't want to be doing what they were doing but felt caught felt caught up yeah. in it yeah and so she went and she lived in Long Island for a while with him and I so this is this is something that's never explained but their kids were living with a foster parent I don't know why the husband didn't have them um but when they tried to go when they tried to um, see their children the children said they didn't want to see their parents and this sort of sent Kim into a tailspin and the next day she was back in Atlantic City and um she died um right after that oh Uh, yeah so it was sort of like she was almost out of there. Um, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Um, sorry, I'm like scanning my notes here. Um, they all had a massive amount of drugs in there, like a large amount of drugs in their system. Um, cocaine in Kim and Tracy's, alcohol in Molly's, and a, legal, a lethal dose of heroin in Barbara's. Wow. Um, so they think that they think that the killer sort of not poison. What do I, what do you want to say? Like over drug them so that they would sort of be pliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we don't know. We don't know because there's literally no, um, there's nothing. There's a, there's a, so the interesting thing about this, that the killing season talks about um, is that the prosecutor for this, Jeff Blitz, the Atlantic City prosecutor, or Atlantic County prosecutor, held one press conference mm-hmm. and then never again, um, and didn't hasn't released anything in however many years it's been fourteen years. Yeah. No, I can't do math. Ten. Yeah, fourteen years since the. Um, yeah, it's this month. It's fourteen years um, since. It, so he hasn't released anything. Like there's no update, and the killing season talks a lot in that in that series. It's it's only one one season, but they talk a lot about how web sleuths are really web sleuths and podcasts and things like that are the people that are really getting stuff done now that it's not the police aren't but sometimes that's not maybe the only direction like you need like having a set of citizen eyes on it mm-hmm. and the killing season talks about how at the time that they film it it's not 16 it's not 14 years it's maybe 10 years um but they talk about like the danger of holding back information that long because like why are you holding it back that long if nothing's being done and there's no there seems to be no investigation or there's nothing moving and you're not reporting on anything then why are you holding back information right it's usually usually the reason is they're like trying to see if any suspects they have will provide them with information that wasn't released to the public but if it's been this long that's what, yeah. Then, yeah. Basically, basically, they were making the argument, what, and, prob- and before podcasts really became a big thing, but they were making the argument that um, that it should be released because, like, I, I understand the danger in letting too many citizens loose out there because, <laughs> I mean, it could become crazy, and the other side of it is that it could ruin people's lives if they're, like, doxxed or right. whatever. But at the same time, by only look, oh, by only having a small eyes on it and, inve- and that are investigating, there's a lot of questions out there, and there are a lot of people who can help or add expertise potentially and have time. Yeah, and have time. Like web sleuth, the web sleuth community is really, really strong. Is it not a police academy situation like Harrison worries? What do you mean? He oh. says you have a police academy situation on your hands. What do you mean? Probably like a billion amateurs. Um, I don't know. Like Police Academy the movie? I think so. 
Oh, it's been a long time. I'm sorry. That's a joke for your generation. That's my old. It's a joke for my. Uh, yeah. Um, I, it, by ineffective, then yes. Um, yeah. and I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say ineffective, but not seeming to be moving in any direction. Um, <laughs> come on, Gina. I know. Um, so yeah, it doesn't seem to be moving, and so it, the argument for podcasts and web to get involved, I think is a strong one. I mean, and then it, it, it reinvigorated me in thinking about what we do, because at some level, you know, we joke like, oh, we like to talk about, talk about murder. We have dark interests or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, if we don't talk about it, would you ever have heard of this? Right. And I would never. By talking about it, maybe someone hears something and then, you know, it goes on and on and on like that. And so it's the kind of thing where it's the kind of thing where I think pub- publicity at this point is nothing but beneficial for a case like this that's sort of been forgotten. I mean, people in our area should absolutely know who the Eastbound Strangler is, and they don't. Yeah. Um, you hadn't heard of it, and I didn't know that that's what he was called. I knew there were murders in Atlantic City. I didn't even know what his name was. Right, yeah. So um, it just it, it's just interesting to me that the killing season kind of goes through that before podcasts are really a big thing. And I think that it's, it's important to note that the, it's not that they're not cooperating, but it's kind of just like in LISC with the Suffolk County police department, they just don't share information. It's just very, very slow to come out. And at a certain point it's holding the, it's holding things up. So is there a profile Harrison wants to know? Yeah, I'm getting to it. I'm oh, getting yeah. to it. <laughs> um, a couple other things that they point out about. So, they um they ba, 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 they came over the profile i'll read that in a second there were a couple of of suspects one of them um an ex-con named bill schlu um nothing really happened with him um he was like a drug connection who knew kim and tracy roberts but like nothing ever came of he was questioned by the police and never arrested so nothing came of that um, one of the interesting things is that they, some people believe that because the body's faces were facing East, that there was a connection with, uh, someone who was Muslim. But the, the cool thing about the killing season is they had a bonus episode where they went to a mosque and spoke to a Muslim man at the mosque. And he was like, no, he was like, this person who did this hated these women. Yeah. Right. If you face if you if someone dies and you face them east it's because you love them you respect them so he said right off the bat um he didn't right. say right off the bat he said it in more uh, beautiful way than i did um that that doesn't make any sense that, right that because that's the direction that you pray right yeah so he was saying like that's not that's not the thing oh mornings um, across america cheer thank you thank you so much Oh my God, we need the support. Obviously, I need a computer with a faster processor. <laughs> um, so, um, but then they they realized that that's a drainage ditch with water that move, can move. And the bodies may have been, I don't think it's possible for them, be, for them to have been moved equidistant and all facing the same way. But they say that that could, that could be a possibility that they were not originally posed that way. Um, another man, so there's with their shoes off, a lot of people believe that this person had a foot fetish. Um, um, a guy named, um, what's his first name? What the hell is his first? Mark Hesney is, uh, somebody who they say he's living at a flop house on the track. I don't know what a flop house is. Um, um it's just like a, a drug house kind of oh, deal. Okay. He offered once offered a woman a foot massage there. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, again, this is the kind of thing too where there because there's not um, because there's not a lot of the police releasing information. People are gossiping. Um, so this guy all of a sudden became a preacher and trying quote unquote trying to talk women out of prostitution. I don't. I I, I get a creepy vibe just from the reading his thing i don't know at offering a massage and then offering it life advice seems out of bounds he was never arrested they talked to him 
Um, what, there was a woman named Denise Hill who was a prostitute who felt like she had a, pers a personal encounter with, um, um, they call him a foot freak. I don't like that. Um, a, a, what do you call it? Foot fetish foot person. Fetish, yeah. a, be a best Western. They said like he kept, he kept talking about her shoes and she, um, she gave him actually a pair of her shoes, um, which is, I don't know. I don't, I guess she saw him more than once. Girl, you sell those online for money. <laughs> she said that the date went from strange to terrifying. He was talking about killing people um, and talking nonsense. And so she did a, with 48 hours, she did a sketch of the guy. And I will share this because um, one of the suspects later, I believe looked, I think looks like a later version of this guy, but we can talk about that. Isn't, um, I have a question. Yeah. I feel like I'm remembering that in the Frankfurt slasher case, there was also a preacher involved. Yes. Okay. Now, so, so supposedly that guy moved to the Midwest and then died shortly after. This is the rumor about that. As we know, rumors are not fact. Right. Um, and he so, would have been way older, too. Yes. Because it was like 30 I, years. But I did note that. And then I thought, mm, perhaps that's just sort of the kind of person that preys on these women. Yeah. Sort of like, let me help you, which is, I think, what the, the rumor of the Frankfurt slasher. Now, this woman who's contacting me is completely sure that it's her uncle, and he's not a preacher at all but he lives across the street from a church so i don't know <laughs> i don't know um the weird thing about the guy who the foot fetish guy that denise hill was talking about his name was eldred raymond birchell there's three he, names there you go done he, he wrote her a letter and he signed it riverman which is a possible reference to the green river killer who's gary ridgeway who also killed sex workers in oregon um, but they couldn't connect him to any of the murders. Um, they also thought he was connected to the Long Island serial killer, but um, it's the kind of thing where he wasn't arrested, but he wasn't ruled out. Mm. Um, so the sketch is out there. I think it's helpful. Um, um, her daughter, Barbara Brader's da daughter, Dominique, thought that the sketch looked like someone she had seen before. But again, the sketch looks like somebody that we've all seen before. I'm just going to say that. Like, it's not very, um, it's not distinct. Yeah. And the guy has sunglasses and a hat on. He looks like any dude working on a construction site. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even like the Golden State Killer ones, it was just like, here is a man kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. The Frankfurt slasher is pretty distinctive. That sketch is pretty distinctive. This one, I'm telling you, if you go to Wawa at noon <laughs> um, on a Tuesday, there's like five guys who look like this. Guy. <laughs> I know exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> so um, um, after five months of dead ends at that time, they started looking at this guy named Terry Olison. Um he, so his girlfriend slash common law wife, I'm not sure, uh, they lived together in New Jersey and she's the one that called the police saying that she thinks he did it. Um, they also, while they were in the house looking at stuff, what do you call it? When searching? Yes. <laughs> while they were searching. For evidence? <gasps> while they were hi i'm gina what is true crime um, <laughs> while while they were searching um his house they found a videotape that he made of his wife's daughter who's underage so yucky on top of yucky and they were having domestic mm -hmm. issues so he actually went to um jail for that and then while he was in jail, it kind of, yeah, vi videotaping a minor in the nude with a hidden camera. Um, he gave DNA. His DNA did not match the DNA that they found. Um, he feels that his life was ruined because um, they never came back and they never really named him a person of interest, but it just blew up that like he was in jail. They were looking at him kind of thing. They never released that his DNA didn't match. It was all that kind of stuff. So he he never was able to really clear himself in the eyes of um, 
the public. A woman came out, a sex worker came out and said that he tried to kill her, but then she later recanted that story. So he looked really guilty for a long time. And I'm sure there are people who probably still think he's the one that did it. I'm going to say something weird that I probably won't ever say again, <laughs> but just because you film underage children doesn't necessarily mean you're a serial killer. Right. You're a terrible person in another way. That's the disgusting thing to say, but that's just... Right. It's also too different. I, I get that they're both sex-related, but it's two different, to me, areas. Um, but I don't know. I'm not an expert. But in my mind, I thought, well, you could be guilty of one and not the other. Yeah. Um, he is now... He's got a fiancé now. So, I mean, anything can happen, I guess. Does she have a daughter? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. And this is a woman who uh, he knew from like high school. Oh. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's um, that's where that is. Um, he's bitter, obviously, about like being na- like kind of like named a suspect, and we you can see that. And a great example of that, if you wa- listen to In the Dark, uh, the Jacob Wetterling case, the neighbor was basically his life was ruined because yeah. everyone assumed he was the kidnapper and he ended up not being, but he never could really recover. He lost his, basically his whole life. Yeah. His parents died and all, it's terrible, terrible tragedy. So it does, that does happen to people. Um, and so on this chasing news, on this chasing news uh, show, which is, is odd. They interview this guy. His, what the hell is his name? Gary Britton. Gary Britton is a retired Trenton homicide cop. And so in, in 2008, I believe, which is two years after the murder, he was following up with a, with a partner on a missing woman case. And I, I wrote her name and then the, the, what happened was I wrote it. And then my, my, um, my file crashed and I saved and I had to write it up and retype it. And I forgot to, Oh, there she is. I do have the name. I was like, shit, I didn't retype it. Uh, Danielle Nuttall is her name. So they were looking, she was another sex worker that had gone missing. And so he had been looking for her and she was never found. Her body was never found. And they thought it could be related to the um, serial killer, to the Eastbound mm-hmm. strangler. Um, so, um, by the way, the other women were either um, strangled or asphyxiated. I forgot to add that in. So, which obviously, if he's called the strangler, it makes sense. Um, so then two years later, this guy, Gary Britton, gets called in on an anti-gun task force. There's this guy named Dennis Gaskell, and he is arrested in Indiana for stealing a gun at a gun show. But he actually lives in Atlantic County. New Jersey. And so they search his house and they find very weird things. They find 70 guns that have been stolen. Um, they find he did all these draw drawings and they're, um, they're very explicit. They're of him with both male and female genitalia. They're, um, just like very, very odd, very disturbing, very violent pictures. A lot of, he writes in a lot of code, like um, acronyms that don't make any sense. Um, A lot of like notes that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he also has like, obviously like pornography and like some other stuff in the house. But then they like this guy, Gary Britton, he doesn't go through all of it, but he says like, he, he did this thing where he cut out like in those outdoor life magazines, like pictures of like deer bodies and whatever you hunt bodies of animals. And then he would cut out um, like from penthouse faces of women and glue them on top of the the animal bodies. And then he would go to the shooting range and shoot out the faces of the women, okay. but leave the animal body. Interesting. So, so beyond, beyond <laughs> that's, that's, I think, a red flag. <laughs> so also hated women. Um, <laughs> so uh, like a little bit of a red, a little yeah. red flag. Although that's a totally different MO. Like it he is. didn't shoot them. So. It is. Because they say this person like obviously hates. Yeah. And, and then – um. He also had a lot of references in his writings to him having sex with his animals. 
And when he was arrested in Indiana, he had a goat with him. Oh, poor goat. Not going to say anything more. Um, He was also a long haul trucker, which as we know, is not necessarily a guarantee of being a serial killer, but. You have a lot of opportunity. Convenient. Um, So, and there was, he said there was also like just a lot of weird stuff that this guy was like not on this, like not on this planet. Well, this guy ends up killing himself while waiting extradition to New Jersey. So he's not, they can't, they can't question him. So. What's so that now guy's name again? Dennis Gaskill. Dennis and he, Gaskill. For me, I will post this and I hope people get back to me. I should have done it ahead of time and my headache like precluded me from doing it. Um, I think he looks like an up, like an older version of the sketch. That being said, a lot of people probably look like the sketch. Mm. But I can see elements. Then this changing news. So I'm suspicious of this next part. I'm just going to tell you what they reported. I, you can take it for whatever it's worth. They get a tip from somebody who says that um, they had a divine message. I don't mean from God. I mean from the universe. That yes, told thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't like it was it was like one of those. Um, what do you call it? Like an astral plane or something? I don't I couldn't okay. understand what he was talking about. It was basically that he had a sign that there was something in the woods that he had to go to. OK. And when he gets there, he finds all of these. T- this is this, what this guy's saying. And he gets there. He finds all these tires and inside the wall of the tires, he finds garbage bags filled with obviously garbage sex toys and draw like and drawings and the drawings look and the drawings are laminated and they look kind of like the drawings that garrett um dennis gaskill did Mm. profiler the profiler says you know definitely these are bizarre they find all these notes that are sort of like indecipherable but um they take them so on one of the notes they they deduce that this he was referencing like a strip club so they take it to the strip club um and um they interview people there and one of the people they show him a picture of dennis gaskell and the guy says oh i know him from a different bar so i don't know if this means anything like it doesn't mean anything the other thing that's weird besides the fact that the guy found these had a divine message that they were in the woods he yeah. also would not at first share the drawings. He wouldn't release them at first and then mm-hmm. decide to later. So that part was really unsettling to me because I'm like, this guy drew those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause I'm like, there's no way that he just got a message from the universe that there were some tires in the wood. Like, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm going to just come up on the, uh, I'm going to come on the side that I don't believe that. If I was the universe and I had to tell someone, if I, w- if I was the universe and I wanted to help humanity solve a crime, I would send my divine message to like the investigators. Um, right. <laughs> so it doesn't have to go through like whisper down the lane because, yeah. you know. Um, it's, it's weird because it's like they, they, they interview this guy, but he's off camera. You only hear his voice. Um. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. I looked at our I looked at our video on top. That's delayed. I'm looking at two videos of us, and one is delayed and one's not, and I got confused. <laughs> sorry, everybody, my brain's not working. So, um, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, so the guy's off camera. You never see him, and the fact that he the, the tire thing is weird, but what I would say is what they went and they found that they found the t- the place where the tires were. And it was only like four miles from where the hotel, where the body was. And there was like a direct path, mm. like, like, a, like a, conceivably take a path to get there. Well, so, it, wait, a walking path or a driving path? I think it's a combination of both. The okay. way that, it was very confusing, but it looked like it was easy to just, if you were going to get, if you're going to hightail it out of there, it was on the same trajectory that you would, you could dump them in the, you can okay. dump them in the woods. Cause you're not going to carry a body four miles, but you would drive it. Right. But this, this is the dump site of the garb, the, the, the dump site of the bodies was four miles from where they found these photos. Oh, oh, okay. So I, okay. This guy found these photos. I don't know what yeah. you guys, I definitely think this guy 
made those photos. <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like a refusal to turn them over at first means there were no photos until you had to produce them and then suddenly there are photos again. They're disturbing. They're definitely disturbing. Um, but they do that. The, he also uses those acronyms that um, Dennis... Um, mm. So I don't know if Dennis Gaskell's a red herring or... Um, oh, the guy's name that... They didn't reveal the name of the guy. It's the other thing. So this unnamed, unseen source with magical <laughs> capabilities. Right. Right. Families. And the and it was like disturbing, some disturbing. Like you, they they um black or or blurred out some of the stuff and I was like uh, mm. if I found that in the woods I would not be okay. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, so that's a weird thing. And then I wanted to go over the so the 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 profile John Kelly did the profile. He's a famous profiler. And why is it not scrolling? Come on, you piece of junk. Because we're here. Let me move us. Um, it's funny. Mercury's out of retrograde. This should not be happening. It's just like I'm trying to open this thing and it like won't. Well, okay, Atlanta City partial profile. Open up, baby. It's not opening for me. Hold on, everybody. I got you. Please subscribe to the show to support this channel. We both need new computers. We both need help. Oh. <laughs> I hope if this is your first, um, know that we are wonderful and always prepared and that yeah. sometimes just things happen when you're using technology. Yeah. We're warts and all. We're <laughs> perfectly imperfect. Well, if you wanted if you wanted polish, get the hell yes, out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you're still here. <laughs> Um, here, let me try to open this. Oh, there we go. So the profile is long. I, I wanted to narrow it down and I was like, I don't even know how to narrow this down and I can probably share it is the best way, but some of the things that they, they updated it through the years. So they think that this person is um, a male who lives in the Atlantic city area, just because of like where the body was dumped. They're not sure if the pe the women were killed in that hotel or motel. Um, there's a rumor that they were all killed in room 109. That's unsubstantiated. Um, there's n they have no, they don't have any evidence of any murder scene whatsoever. That's they say he has an organized personality, um, probably the way that he organized the bodies and the shoes and all that. Um, uh, he's rigid and structured. Um, what they said about this guy, Dennis Gaskill, is that he was very rigid and structured, like all of his notes, like even though the notes were crazy, they were very organized, like he was very fastidious and organized. Um, they said a place, <laughs> I don't know why it's funny that this would be his motto that they're guessing <laughs> for a, a killer. They guessed his motto for the profile? That's so <laughs> He says, a place for everything and everything in its place would be his motto. And I was like, hmm. I don't think that's his motto, but yeah, it's probably not. I think his motto is I hate women and want to kill them. <laughs> oh God. Um, he um, has an extreme foot fetish down to the path where, or down to the place where um, he would have a collection of the women's shoes or these, like he made that he kept these as a trophy perhaps. Um, he, um, said that he's not killed every prostitute or sex worker that he's come into contact with. He's non-social. Um, he's very opinionated. Um, um, they say, they say like in his pre-offense mode, he might have spoken about the sinful nature of prostitution, um, or voiced economic concerns about them destroying Atlantic City's value or reputation. And then in, afterwards, he would have said things like they got what they deserved. And they also think that he's interested in art on some level, like visual art, because I guess of the way he posed the bodies. Mm. Um, so uh, it says his hobbies would include art and photography. Um, and that he would always be looking at violent pictures in the of women in the media. Um, they think that he was probably abused as a child. Um, they update it to say that he indulges himself with alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine. Um, his female victims are surrogates for his, for his rage against his either wife or girlfriend or an ex. Um, he may have lost a lot of money gambling in Atlantic City and had financial problems. Um, he would order, he might, um, 
the first comment he would make when meeting a woman would be, where did you buy those shoes? Or I like you sh- your shoes or something like that. Someone said that to me in an elevator once. And now I'm like, what? He's bound Strangler. They were great shoes though. Were you like floor? <laughs> Open <Yeah. please. laughs> It's so sad because like if normally if someone gives me a compliment, I'm like, oh, thanks. I got them at this place for this price. And now I'll be like, you murder. Yeah. And I'll be like, ooh, yeah, right down shoes. the day and the time. <laughs> Um, uh, the serial killer believes he's superior to others and has a God complex. And that goes along with the strangling. Um, I don't, I disagree that this is a religious reason to face them East. I just, I just don't buy into that. It's so, I would never get that. Maybe it's because I just think like, I don't know. What do you think? Does anybody think about that? I, yeah, I don't know. Other than like the sun, the mm-hmm. rising sun. Mm. Right. Atlantic City was to the east. So that's where, like, that's what I would have been thinking. Uh, like, the location. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. They said um, obsessive, he would be obsessive compulsive. Um, he has roots in childhood abuse. He's paranoid. Um, he lacks heterosexual social skills. Um, I guess just like can't really communicate with women. Um, it says he's fearful of being arrested and facing life in prison. Um, they, a lot, everybody that they talk to says they don't think that he stopped. They just think that he moved on. Interesting. Every person that they interviewed in the show, um, any article, they all said the same thing. Like they don't believe that he would stop. They just believe. But then like, this was before the golden state killer, which we know the golden state killer stopped, but he only stopped. Like he would still make phone calls, right? The golden state killer. He made phone calls. So I think he couldn't physically do it maybe because he just couldn't do what he did when he was younger, the golden state killer. So I don't know because some serial killers do stop, but they said, this guy's not the kind that would stop. Um, and a lot of people feel that he's connected in some way to a boat. Um, um, I think this, the serial killer that they talked to in that show, Dark Mind says a boat is a perfect place to kill someone because you can't hear anything, you know, you can can watch, like it's, no one's going to really search it. Like you can get away with a lot on a boat and they feel that um a boat is connected to this might be connected to list because they were found in water i don't know but then why like drag them all the way inland right i don't just dump them in the ocean ocean, yeah yes sandy thinks the east might be for meditation ah it could be no yeah no idea with a boat yeah so i don't know even the boat thing either i think it's um them wanting to connect things remember Um, when golden state killer everyone thought he was a pilot for a minute yes and he was right he had it didn't he have a i think he had a a pilot's license didn't he oh i don't i don't remember that detail or maybe not maybe he just lived near a i can't remember i thought that he did um they said that this is this kind of person would kill himself rather than being caught which is what dennis gaskill did and there's a $25,000 award for information that leads to the arrest of the conviction. And again, there's a lot of theories in these shows. Like they interview a lot of women uh, who are working um, sex workers on the street and they um, they have a lot of theories. But again, this is the classic thing of no information from the police leads to... They might know stuff because they talk and they would Wait, know. Hold on. hold on. You went out for a second. Okay. Are you back? Am I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Audio problems on top of everything else. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I don't. So it's so anyway. So there's a number. Uh, the phone number is. I have it all on. I, should, I put it all on different. I, I don't, for some reason I worked on like 12 different documents. Um, <laughs> it's the phone number. There's a different, obviously prosecutor now, but he's just as closed lipped as the other one. But the Atlantic County major crime unit is six zero nine nine zero nine seven six six six. The devil's number. 
Oh, um, 609 number, man. Oh, that's the number to call with any information at all. And this could be anything that doesn't seem like it's a thing. Um, even down to that changing news, this one girl was saying how she would go down to Atlantic City and like get a cheap motel on the on the Black Horse Pike with her friends. And that's how they would stay there. And she said like, she thinks she could have been there right when this was going on and like, didn't even know anything about it. Yeah. So again, it's just like, who knows, who knows what you think, you know, um, I'll put the full profile up there. I skimmed a lot because it was a lot of repetition, but, um, you know, I think it's worth looking at. And, uh, if you're going to watch anything about it, I would say killing season three and four, it's free on Amazon prime. Um, and uh, it's worth, I think the whole season is, is pretty well done, um, even though it's a couple years old now. Yeah. So anyway, that's the wild story of the unsolved um, eastbound strangler. I don't know how I feel about him being related to Lisk. They say he's not. There are, to me, there are similarities. I don't know. But there's definitely, I think the relationship is that there's just a pattern of men killing these women who they can get too easily. Yeah. Um, and people, they think that people won't miss them and they think that, and they're right in the fact that a lot of times police won't investigate or won't investigate hard. Yeah. So. My cat has a theory. <laughs> he doesn't really. He <laughs> came into me out with me. He's like, my theory is that it was my dry food dinner time 41 minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, we've we've had a hell of a time trying to explain daylight savings time to him. Yeah, um, he's not getting it, which is yeah. fair. I mean, I don't get it either. I don't. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's crazy. I can't believe we didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's really cool. I mean, Atlantic City is close, and to think like I really honestly stopped going there um, before the everybody everything closed, but when it started to get more and more violent. Yeah. What year and- is this again? 2006. Okay, so and- it was probably when I was going down to AC every single week to um, remote engineer the poker show for oh WPEN AM, and um, it was Sports Radio 950 at the time. And we'd be we'd post up in a different casino. We had like four that we rotated through. One oh of God. them was the Trump Taj Mahal. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so wow. I forget what year it would have been. It would have been like oh five oh six, but like I could have even brushed past these people who work at the Taj or like been there, been right yeah. near somebody. Yeah, I don't like I when I was younger, my grandparents would give me like a little bit of money, and I would just like hang out with them, and you know, it's like twenty thirty dollars or something. But like now, like after a certain age, I was like, I'd rather just buy something at the gap. <laughs> <laughs> like I just didn't want to spend it there and then c- coupled with the violence I was like I'm out I it's not worth it to me it's kind of it's sad it's a sad uh it's sad how it kind of fell apart there and yeah. it's sadder to me that you have a whole city of people kind of lost there mm-hmm. and that it doesn't seem like there's any it seems really hope I know nothing is hopeless but it seems hopeless and it seems like what is the common denominator in all of these cases? Like, why does it keep happening? Why can't it be, why can't, why can't something be done at minimum? I know that there are people working on human trafficking, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I feel like when it comes to sex work, like that's the least of anyone's concern. And it's sad because they're obviously vulnerable victims. Wait, Sandy, do you really have a tuba lesson? That's amazing. (laughs) I don't believe it. Pictures or it didn't happen. Yeah. To me, it's just like, it's a pattern now. Like I keep, I'm really interested in these cases and it's a sad pattern that, and it looks like with so many of them, the it's unsolved. That's the other thing that kills me. It's like, I mean, Willie Picton was solved, but that was solved after that's an excellent story for anyone who's interested that happened in, um, in Vancouver, um, Canada. He went a decade. He killed over 50 women. Um, and the police kept just saying like, no, it's not related. No, there it's not a, there's no killer out there. 
So at least now we have people saying, yeah, yeah, there's a killer, but, you know, and these families miss their loved ones. There's, they have kids who are, um, you know, they have kids who miss them. They have right. families who miss them. Yeah. And people who want to know, like, want to know what yeah. happened. What happened to them? I want to know. Yeah. People matter. Like, people matter. People are important. They're, they're human beings. They're loved. That they fell on. And they said, like, these women, like the Kim Raffo, she fell on bad times. It was, like, within three years that she was, like, PTA mom to dead or, like, cl- somewhere in there. And um, that's, like, it, it, I think when you hear, like, when you hear the final line, like, sex worker murdered – you're not getting the whole picture of like who she was and the tragedy of her life. Mm -hmm. And we all have trauma and tragedy. And I think to whittle somebody down to the bad choices that they make is. Well, we see that a lot. We're in Philadelphia area and Philadelphia is one of the epicenters of the opiate epidemic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can tell you actually my hometown, Williamstown, New Jersey. And I don't know if this is still true. But a few years ago, had the highest rate of opioid overdose in the country. Oh, my God. It was higher than Camden because Mm -hmm. it was middle class people who had money, who could afford it, who didn't have anything else to do. There's only one bar in town and no movie theaters. Yeah. And they would go to Camden to get high or like to buy and then come home. But and it's just people... I hate how people don't understand how slippery addiction is. Mm -hmm. Like whenever something comes up in, in the neighborhood, the neighborhood Facebook group, people are always like, Oh, let them, whatever happens to them. Like, Oh, they deserve it. Oh, you just shouldn't be a junkie. Like it's, it's, that's not, especially with opiates. That's not how it works. Like you get prescribed something for your pain and you can get so dependent on them with your, depending on how your body chemistry is that when you stop taking them, just the pain comes back. So you need more. I mean, look at Prince. Prince died of the same stuff that people in Fishtown are ODing on every day in front of the library. Yep. So. Um, it's a myth. It's a myth that is, or like a myth that makes people comfortable. Like, oh, like to deal with the death. Like, oh, well, they were into bad things. So, and it's just like not taking in, into account like the whole life and and that, yeah, addiction is the slippery slope. My So my college boyfriend, he had struggled with addiction and his brother did. And I, you know, obviously like I keep very minimal contact with them, but I like, I mean, I'm not like, we're at minimum friends on Facebook. And, um, and I, like, he was my boyfriend, like in my early twenties. Um, and I think two years ago, on on Facebook, he put a message of his, and so he was a little bit older than me. His brother was my exact age, but in a grade younger. And um, he put a message on Facebook about his brother's um, viewing information. And I just sobbed because I was like, oh my God, like he was in his forties at that point. Like he was probably, since I knew them up and down, up and down. And I know that my uh, college boyfriend doesn't drink. Like he's, he went to AA and all this stuff and he's sober, but I guess his brother just couldn't. Yeah. And these are people who like, and and I'm not saying that it's not this case, but it's the same thing. It's middle class. They live in Bucks County in a really nice area, beautiful parents. Um, her mom, his mom did have some drug addiction in her family um because they came from abject poverty but they were like up and coming people his brother went to Penn State to art school he was a graphic designer I mean these are this is not like you're thinking like bottom of the barrel like that's what I think people assume like you're bottom of the barrel yeah we stigmatize yeah yeah and it's not these are beautiful it's a beautiful person who just couldn't for his basically all his adult life couldn't handle it and you know he died and that doesn't mean that we say too bad you yeah. know and if he if he was a if he was a woman and he so if he, I'm not saying this happened but like if the men go to crime let's say to support their habit and women go to sex work because that's what is available to them right it doesn't mean that they are bad people it means that they fell into a situation where they have no up and there they don't really see a way out and that's what I mean like there has to be a better way for us as people 
Mm-hmm. I can't, I just can't believe I, it's naive. I know I'm idealistic and naive, but I just can't believe that this kind of thing just ha- happens and happens and happens and that there's no solution and that, you know, we just have like women, okay, you're out on the street, good luck. And if you die, it's your fault. You know, right. and if you're addicted to drugs, well, get help. And right. it's not, not like that. It's, it's so much more complicated than that. A civilized society should not abandon people. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, the older I get, the more selfish I think people are. And I'm like, wait, there has to be a better way for us. Like, there, we have to be better people. Yeah. I think we do. Like, we are at a dangerous point in the world where we have to become better people. And it's just... Right. The old ways aren't working. No. They're not working. And this breaks, these stories, I think I'm so compelled by them because they absolutely break my heart because they don't have to happen. But I don't know the answer because I'm not a genius. Right. (laughs) I don't even know what to do, but it's just like, I think that you're, it's becoming, if you're having serial killers in multiple cities and that's what the killing season does do, they go to multiple places in the country where there is an unsolved serial killer of prostitutes, of sex workers, um, that's an epidemic, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. It shouldn't be happening. And it's not, it's nice to think it's the same dude going from uh, state to state, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the um, trivia that I use over and over again? We have trivia. There's oh, yeah. 300 active serial killers at any yeah. given time in the United States. Mm-hmm. So. And they found the recipe. Kills people that you think are like, at the, that police don't care about. Yeah. Or society doesn't care about. Yeah. Well, all we have to do is start caring, and then what are they going to do? Isn't that that's the magic thing? But that's like that is the hardest thing. Yeah, it people is. don't care about other people; they just don't. And I read this thing where you can only really fundamentally, like, truly care about a finite amount of people in your life. So, like, I get that that you can't save everybody in the world, but I do think you can have like maybe not the same level of care that you would over your your um, immediate family or friends, but there should be a base level of humanity. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Advocates, like maybe, I don't know, there should be more. There's a, there's, I just learned about it by reading one of the articles for this, that there's a group called Guardian Angels and they exist in a couple of places that go around and they talk to people on the street because people on the street would rather talk to them than maybe police but I don't know a lot about them I just read about them but I thought like yeah things like that are needed yeah like a network of connected people who are like paying attention yeah and that needs resources yeah because what do you need to do you need to get these people stable housing stable necessities like stable income it's Mm -hmm. yeah one of the one of the places so in when I read about um Willie Pickton so in Vancouver's, I think it's downtown east side, they have a, a very serious drug and heroin problem there. And they have actually, like, there's one place, I think it's a church, but I think it's run by not the church, but the community group. But I, I it doesn't, it's neither here nor there. But they have every night, they have somebody come in um, and cook food, like uh, pro bono, like cook food for the women. And it's a safe place where only, um, um, like certain part of the population can come in and they can get showers and watch TV. And so like they have a safe place to go for a Mm -hmm. couple of hours. And I thought that's all volunteer. That's all like self fund, like nonprofit, I should say. And that's um, that, like, I thought that was such a beautiful thing. And I'm like, more places need something like that where these women can go not judged. And maybe that's like the shower that they get or the, like, a safe meal or just like a safe place they could be for a couple of hours. Yeah. Well, um, South Street, was it South Street Cinema? Um, did something like that during the polar vortex a couple of years ago, their our movie theater. Oh, and they decided to, they yeah. stayed open all night for homeless people to come in. And I think they would just show movies and you could come in and I think they had food. They got food from somewhere, which maybe eventually why they got shut down. Like, they got shut down for a code violation because they were doing this, mm. but they were like, we can, we can help come in from the cold, like come mm-hmm. in, sit down, watch a movie, use the bathroom, mm-hmm. hear some food. 
The problem is the other side of that is that, that like as much as you have people who need that, then you have people who are going to exploit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's never it's going to be it's going to be both sides. Yeah. It's, yeah. I but mean, it, well, it listen, out in Vancouver. So I mean, yeah. whatever they're doing is is magic. You know, I listen, I, I worked in radio for 10 years. 15 years, people, yeah, people are going to exploit. People are going to hog things, but you can't not do something for this small sliver of people who are going to take advantage. And you know what? The people who are going to take advantage might need to. Yeah. So you're right. You're right. It's, I mean, it's funny because I did an audition at that South Street cinema and it was the, I had to, use the potty and it was the dirtiest bathroom. Oh I don't even, I think I ended up being like, I'm good. Oh no. <laughs> <Hold it. laughs> clean your bathroom for the homeless South Street cinema. Jeez, they deserve oh, a clean bowl. What kind of thing where you went in and you went, oh, what oh, happened no. in here? Like train spotting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where oh, it was God. like, it wasn't even just like, I mean, I am stingy and I am like, um, like a germaphobe, but this was being, this was the next level to where I was like, I can't, I, mm. I don't even have to pee anymore. <laughs> it's evaporated because I was horrified. Like, <laughs> burst into flames. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it was so gross. Oh my God. So anyway, that is our story. It's not like, obviously there's never a happy ending here. Um, not I do unsolved. Hope, yeah. I do hope that they can solve it, but I don't know unless they release stuff about this. And well, maybe there's DNA now. Maybe they could do that genealogy stuff. Oh, true, because there is DNA. It would take the prosecutor to do something. I don't know what would motivate them to. I think one of the things they talk about, I think, in the killing season is the fact that, you know, the city has had so many problems that they kind of, they think that they are keeping this under wraps because it's like another stain on the Right on the um you would think they'd want to solve it but i guess by like making it kind of pretend like it's not there like swept under the rug then and you're not really having an outcry from the community and it's not still going on right no they think he's moved on moved on yeah which is great great news (laughs) yeah for okay. whoever else so if you are in a jurisdiction that has an mo that matches this one um hook yeah. up with atlantic city yeah if you know anyone who knows anyone um, yeah. Yeah, spread that word around because this would be wonderful to get solved just for the two for dominique and jeremiah the two little kids you know the kids who who were in their parents lives and yeah. lost them yeah well great story gina thank you so much thank you. i'm sorry it was fragmented and then interrupted by my my uh Your- shelter story it's fine it's fine everything will be all right I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yeah. We're all here for you, even the chat. I hope. <laughs> it's a yeah. tough week, guys. Yeah. It'll get better. It'll get better. It'll get better. It'll get better. Um, so maybe it'll get better by Friday. That's our next show. That's our next show. <laughs> but if not, that's fine. Um, oh, it's Friday the 13th. Oh, that's right. It's guaranteed to get better. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be spooky. Um, right. Yeah, we'll have to figure out something cool and like witchy to do. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I may have said this in the last broadcast, but the last time there was a Friday the 13th was in March, and that was when the lockdown started. Right. So. And this is when the next lockdown's going to start. Whee! Oh, it's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. It's not a big deal. My yeah. son's school is, he's been all virtual, but there's some people like half virtual and half um, in school. And now it's going back to all virtual, I guess, because of the climbing cases so yeah well we're back up at april levels everyone so wear your mask oh, wear wash your, mask. your hands don't touch your face which i've been doing the whole time i've just I noticed that like, i am a face toucher i know yeah we're in our houses and we washed our hands yeah it's we're fine good. we're good wash your hands <laughs> um yeah so we will see you on um friday what are you gonna do to decompress tonight i well, I um I finished the Nexium doc on stars. And um I noticed that the um Leah Remini Scientology doc is on Netflix. So oh, I started that. Love that. It's a, it's repeat it's what she already aired, right? I think because I've seen all of them. Yeah, it's like four seasons in. It's great. I love Leah Remini. Yeah, it's it's been interesting so far. 
Um, yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm my, my number one thing is I, I have to do some work for work. So that's not really decompressing. Right. But I'm going to maybe watch something fun. If it's only nine, I'll put something on that makes me laugh. Um, yeah. And try to feel better. I'm just feeling very bad. I'm like having, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just emoting. I'm having okay. like, a really, like, I'm stressed. <laughs> I'm not feeling my best. I'm feeling very upset. So it seems uh, like a normal reaction to your situation that you're in. So I'm like, and I'm like, I need to do lawn, all that stuff. So tonight I'm just going to take a deep breath. And then tomorrow, like do laundry, get my shit together. Take that dog back. (laughs) And uh, yeah, yeah. Figure out how I'm going to figure this out. (laughs) So. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, I hope. I hope your week gets better, Gina. Thank you. Hope you feel I hope everyone has a good week. I'm nope. sorry for emoting. Thank you for being here for me. You have no choice, right? I mean, I guess you could just leave, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. And thank you for all. Well, the chat really came through with some awesome comments in support of you and like understanding. So you guys are great. You're all yeah. amazing. Um, Thank yeah. you for watching. If you have any suggestions for Friday the 13th, uh, let us know. We would yeah. love to do something that you would love to do. We could do a watch party. Um, yeah we can watch the killing season (laughs) we could watch the killing season um follow us if you haven't subscribe if you haven't we really really appreciate thank you so much x28 project we i'm so happy to see you coming back um yeah subscribe if you haven't you can subscribe for free if you uh, link your amazon prime account in prime gaming Um, please do yeah (laughs) we love it um we love the support thank you so much and have an awesome week and we will see you on friday bye everybody